Tangipahoa Parish has produced many key political figures such as Congressman James Morrison. In 1937, Morrison wrote the charter of the newly formed Louisiana Farmers Protective Union and launched a public relations campaign on behalf of union members in the Strawberry Belt centered about Tangipahoa Parish. From 1943 to 1967, he represented Louisiana's 6th Congressional District in the United States Congress. One of his chief accomplishments is helping to get Interstate 12 brought to the parish. And through the efforts of Congressman Jimmy Morrison, he argued, very rightfully so, as we've seen more recently, that New Orleans and I-10 going down into New Orleans was subject to flooding, especially during hurricane season and the such. And he said, we need an east-west corridor that will connect, you know, like from Mobile, Alabama to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on over to Houston. And so Mr. Jimmy, as we all know him, you know, went before Congress and everything and got money appropriated to get I-12 constructed through this area. Think about Hammond in the 1940s and the 1950s. when. Our ancestors elected a congressman, James Morrison. Can you imagine, forget Baton Rouge and New Orleans, can you imagine Little Hammond, Louisiana, late 1940s, early 1950s, electing a congressman? Not only did that happen, but James Morrison was able to use his power to get I-12. There was no original plan of Dwight Eisenhower for Interstate 12. I-10 was going through New Orleans. James Morrison got I-12. Jimmy Morrison not only across the interstates, but he voted for Lyndon Johnson's civil rights program. And that was not popular in Tangipo Parish. And he said when he cast that vote that he was probably losing his seat in the House of Representatives. He'd been there 22 years. Jimmy Morrison was a good and faithful servant to the people of Tangipahoa Parish. And they rejected him at the end of his political career. But then, of course, other great people have been rejected by the people they sought to serve as well. Another major Louisiana political figure to emerge from Tangipahoa Parish is Governor John Bell Edwards. Edwards graduated from Amite High School in 1984 as valedictorian and went on to receive a bachelor's degree in engineering from West Point. He served two terms as Louisiana congressman and practiced law in Amite before being elected governor in 2016. Good evening, I'm Frank Edwards and I was asked to introduce our governor it's kind of difficult to introduce someone that everybody knows. Um, that's what happens when, I guess, you get in your hometown. But John Bell grew up in Amy. He was one of eight children, second from the bottom, second from the last. <laughs> and he learned early on the importance of public service. So the people of Louisiana uh, know that they're better off. They tell me that everywhere I go. Uh, I know that they like the fact that I reach across the aisle, that, that I work with Republicans, Democrats, independents, uh, that, that everything that I've done as governor were the things that I ran on. Uh, and, and we've been able to turn deficits into surpluses, stabilize our state. We're making critical investments now, m many of them for the first time in a decade. Teacher pay raise, first time in a decade. Uh, new money for higher education, first time in a decade. Southeastern, right there. Our uh, Florida Parishes uh, Community Technical College is here in this area. Incredibly important for our future, and, and I think people know that the economy is, is performing much better, uh, and so we just have to keep it going. Uh, but I am proud to tell you that today unemployment is two full percentage points lower than it was the day I became governor. Uh, we have a 10-year <laughs> we have a 10-year low and the unemployment rate. And in fact, there are more Louisianans working today than ever before in our history. Last year, we had the largest decline in unemployment in the nation. That's what opportunity looks like. Governor Edwards comes from a long line of respected political figures. His brother, Daniel Edwards, serves as the fourth member of his family to hold the office of Tangipahoa's sheriff. 
I said, Papa, you know, I don't mean any disrespect to you. I said, everywhere I go, I almost to a T, people like you, and you are certainly a tremendous asset to me in my campaign. I said, but of everyone that mentions your dad, you know, when we're talking about the Frankie Medward Sr., I said, I've never found anyone, never found a single person who, who said an unkind word about him or who truly didn't like him. And, and that's true to this day. No one has ever said anything that was uh, less than 100% positive about my, my grandfather, Frank Edward Sr. The stories that I was told when I was running for sheriff in 2003, now these would have been some, by some fairly old people uh, at the time, but they just said, you know, to me, they remember my grandfather helping people who were truly financially just strapped, couldn't, you didn't have money to do anything because of the Great Depression. And there were certain things that he was able to do to help them not to lose their home or not to lose their form or whatever it was that, you know, that was up for foreclosure. Well, my father was sheriff pretty much from the time I was born uh, until I was 12 years old. That's 1968, 1980. My dad's concept of policing was more of a community policing way before you ever heard that concept. He really believed in having people who knew the local area and, and hiring you know, the best person from within that area that knew that area and that could get along with people from that area. And anytime there was a problem in that area, that would be the deputy or the detective he would want to try to handle that situation. Anytime there was a crime, you know, in that area, that'd be the person he wanted to try to work on that crime and try to solve that crime. And so that's what I call community policing today, or community policing way after his term in office ended. And it became so big, and then you had all these community policing grants that, that came out on the federal levels and things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this is something my dad was doing, you know, from 1968 to 1980. The big successes that, that we've had as sheriff is, came into a department that truly at the time that, that I took over in 2004 had a very small what you call fund balance, it's money in the bank. It had an aging fleet of vehicles and we steadily stayed within our budget. We've always been able to solve crime at or above the national levels. We've gone from one DARE officer to two DARE officers. We're talking about certified DARE officers and I'm a big believer in a DARE program. It doesn't keep obviously everyone from starting out on drugs, but if it just reaches th three or four students in each school, that, that, that encourages them and seals in them, you know what, I'm gonna stay away from drugs for the rest of my life and it works on three or four students in each school, then I think that program's successful and it's, and it's worth you know, uh, keeping in school. So we've expanded uh, the DARE program. We have spent a lot of money on what we call records management because when I came in, when I came into the office, everything was still being done uh, manually and, and handwritten. So your, your reports and things were done that way. There was really no way to, from a computer to go back and pull up reports and view reports or, or any of this kind of stuff. So we, we implemented a modern record management system, a, a computer aided dispatch system. We've been able to put laptops in all of our deputy, our patrol deputies' cars so they can do their reports from cars where they, they can be dispatched now from 911 and they, they, on the computer screen it shows them you know where their call is. So much has been spent in technology because I think that's honestly the future I think is you have to keep up with technology but there's nothing cheaper and expensive about technology. We've done so much to be able to train and expand upon the training that all of our employees get and, and certainly enforcement is very important important to train them on use of force and to train them on what the current laws is, but I'm talking about on every employee, from sexual harassment to uh, how to recognize and deal with anybody who may be, uh, have mental uh, illness or you know any of those kind of things. We, we constantly try to stay on the cutting edge of training for all employees. Back in 1987, when I first got elected, roads were terrible. People were leaving here to go find jobs. You kind of thought there was no hope, but the people rallied, they uh, passed the tax, they allowed for parish government to do the work that was necessary to be done, and you see the, the fruits of that coming around now. We have one of the fifth fastest growing parishes in the state. We lie between two of the top five parishes in the state in St. Tammany and Livingston. So that means only things can get better for us. So. It's a lot of excitement out there. I think you're starting to see young kids that are getting involved, that want to be part of government, and I think the future is very bright for this parish. I actually serve on the Economic Development Board also as a council member. There are a lot of entities that are looking at Tangibo Parish right now, and I see a lot more of those in the future. So uh, I think we're gonna progress in the arena of higher paying jobs. I think we will still have a lot of folks who are moving here who commute like down to the river and work in those refineries, but I see a very bright future for Tangible Parish. And if progress is going to be made, sometimes you have to be that change yourself. One of the 
I can only talk about me personally. I feel like I've seen progress in my line of research and my line of work since I started. And, uh, plus we have the two interstates, a major airport, an airport with more traffic than Lakefront Airport in New Orleans. We have a lot of assets, Southeastern Louisiana University, Lolly Camp, literally the only functioning charity hospital in the state of Louisiana. And I'm just scratching the surface. Hammond, a transportation hub with five, five-laned roads. Boy, they'd kill for that in Covington or in Denham Springs. It's pretty cool. I mean, the idea that you know, we're 150 years old this year, uh, to think that in um, 1869, there were like 7,800 people living in Tangelo Parish. And today we have 132,000 people. And that even when you go back, you fast forward up to 50 years ago at our 100 year mark, we were talking about the interstates, that they were gonna come through our parish. And today, 50 years later, it's like we couldn't live without it, right? And all the growth that we've had because of it. It's just um, the idea that I'm the second parish president is uh, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for me to be able to serve our people, our citizens, to make sure that our parish continues to set itself up for another 50, another 100 years, another 150 years.